the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent first impressions review two years later in the mango color. Let's go. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Phil Platocha, and today we are going to be reviewing the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent in the mango color, brand new with actually one or two runs on it, uh, with my first impressions on the shoe, which is strange because you would think, hey, Phil, this shoe's been out for almost two and a half, three years. Why are we doing a first impressions video of it? It's because there's some micro changes in the shoe that I would like to discuss as compared to the original shoe that came out in, I think, the spring and summer of 2019. And I do want to address them and get your thoughts on them. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. You know how this goes, guys. Um, if you are watching the channel already and you are subscribed, thanks so much. Love you guys a lot. This is a sip of coffee at 8 p.m. for you guys. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, obviously with the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, already kind of out, not exclusively to the rest of the market. I do want to touch base on this shoe a little bit beforehand, so when it comes time to me acquiring the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 and having the Alpha Fly, of course, I do want to do a comparison of the three and eventually kind of give you my thoughts on them. But without further ado, yeah, I do want to talk about the mangoes because as uh, you guys probably know from watching this channel, Anything in the Mango series just deserves a good review, and of course I wanted this particular pair of shoes for a little while, and I just kind of slept on it, and then I eventually got it through stocks, and well, here we are. I have the Mangoes, and I will be using them a lot, I hope, if not for the Alpha Fly, which again, long story short, we'll discuss that later in a different time. So, I'm gonna put the specs here, but I am just gonna go over them from a general perspective. So, of course, the heel drop of this shoe with the offset is about eight millimeters with the heel being about 40 millimeters and the forefoot being about 32. That's kind of what's going on with that general idea in the midsole, the bottoms. But in terms of the stuff being used, of course, as you guys probably know that this midfoot area has a big plate of rubber that is really good with reinforcing basically your midfoot area whenever you strike, because of course, the idea here is you have a two layers of Zumex foam with a carbon plate sandwiched in between it, and you're going to need as much, I would say, reinforcement on the bottom of the shoe as possible to get that compression and decompression of the carbon plate with this shoe as you are striking the ground nice and hard to get a nice response out of it. So I don't know if I need to put anything else here, probably in the midfoot outsole area. I think that's probably good enough. On the upper, as you guys probably already know, they use the Nike Vapor Weave technology, which is designed to be very breathable and basically not absorb a whole lot of water when it soaks into the top of the shoe if you're running in rain or you step through a puddle or something like that. Or if you're running through snow, which I don't blame you, you can probably really get away with a snow run in this. Basically, it's to allow the shoe to evaporate water or not absorb a whole lot of it so it doesn't gain a whole lot of weight while you're running in it. Um, in the shoelace area, of course, it's pushed over to the side, as you guys probably already know. And the idea here is that it's not locking in on the top of your foot, but it's because it's off to the side, it has a more natural catch to your foot, ultimately. And personally, I like it a lot. I think you just got to play around with the, you know, with the tightness and the pull of the shoelaces in this middle area just to get the lock down real nice. Anything else? I think that's about all we need to really, actually, no, there's one more thing. Of course, we do have the Achilles pillow in the shoe, which is a big help in the heel. And I think overall, it makes for a good ride, I think. So now that we kind of got the general specs out of the way, let's start answering some questions of what has changed based on a first impressions review of the shoe versus the previous model, which in this case, this is my second pair of Vaporflies ever, my 310 edition from 2019 when I ran the Chicago Marathon in three hours, 10 minutes. What are some of the major changes? Well, 
so my understanding is that of course the carbon plate is still a feature of the shoe obviously that's kind of signature to this particular shoe it is still a carbon plate sandwiched between two pieces of zoomax foam ultimately with different color combinations obviously but i think let's just get into uh the major thing that i'm noticing right away is that in the achilles heel area this achilles pillow is actually a lot larger than i remember it being and now again this is just first impressions because as i'm looking at this one which is used up you know how many times you've put it in your foot and whatnot this achilles pillow is a lot thinner it's a lot more pushed in and it's possible and i'm leaning more towards this direction of course that because the shoe is being used a lot more for 200 250 plus miles the achilles pillow eventually loses the fluff that it had in it and that's why it's a lot more compressed but that being said this is something i've also kind of noticed in my previous pair of vaporfly and x percents from 2020 is that the pillow itself is a lot larger and it doesn't end up being nearly as compressed as the previous pair so i wonder if this is maybe the same material being used or this is just a budget cut technique that nike is just kind of implementing once again to save costs but not lose quality or potentially gain quality from maybe disgruntled vaporfly uh fanatics or people who run in this shoe but overall i do think that it might still be the same but there's just a couple of other things such as like the feel that i think after 50 to 100 miles within this shoe that i'll probably go over as we cross that bridge but right now it does feel pretty much the same more or less in terms of you know the response from hitting the ground with a carbon plate and I think it's kind of important to reflect on this shoe again because when you're using something like the Tempo Next Percent and the Alpha Fly, the feeling in this shoe is slightly different and it's something you kind of have to remember overall that when you're using the Alpha Fly, it's got a lot more springy feel and it's a lot softer on the ground because of how much Zoom X is on this shoe versus this more responsive, more, I'm not going to say the word reactive necessarily, but you hit the ground a lot harder. And if you push on the ground a lot harder, you're going to get a lot more of a, you know, a response out of this shoe. Like the carbon plate's going to flex a lot more. It's going to spring you a little bit more. Whereas I can't really 100% say it for certain, but because of the AirPods, and because of the width of this shoe, you're losing a little bit of that maximum potential in this shoe that otherwise would be acquired in the Vaporfly Next Percent. That's something I think we're just going to have to test moving forward. Or if there's like another YouTube video, I'll link it here of somebody who's done this test of like which shoe can you really take to the limit in order to experience the best spring the fastest results, the most efficient results and whatnot. So overall, yeah, again... I think most people agree. I think I'm going to be very, I'm going to be conservative on this number. I'm going to say that over 85% of people definitely approve of the Vaporfly Next Percent in all of its colors and all of its glory. Minus the one pair, I think that came out late 2019, early 2020 that had a very weird manufacturing um defect that made the shoe feel tight in some spots i think if um if you watch my previous video about like me reviewing my five previous vaporfly shoes you'll see what i'm talking about i'll try to link it here if uh i do bring it up but basically so far it feels like the original vaporfly that we are all grown accustomed to loving but now because of the market being you know a lot more carbon plate shoes like the carbon x the hyperion elite the saucony endorphin pro and whatnot and of course the alpha flies just existing in this market this shoe has a lot more competition but it still stands up there in the top echelon of carbon plate racing everyday racer even training pairs of shoes if you have that budget basically at about 50 to 100 miles i do want to observe this achilles pillow to see if it does lose a little bit of its fluff just like the previous pairs or if there was some kind of technological advancement that i was not aware of that may potentially make the heel a little bit tighter have you uh, a little more of a snug fit in the shoe we're gonna see what happens but that's my first impressions of the vaporfly next percent after basically not having a pair for like 
I think over six, maybe eight months now. So I will leave it right there. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys agree with my assessment or have any questions about the shoe, I will be happy to answer it. I've had this shoe for over three years of training, two and a half, depending on how long this shoe was out. And yeah, if you've seen my previous renditions of the video, you see I can destroy this shoe in like less than 250 miles. It's pretty insane. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys real soon.